Hello, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so today we are continuing on the ABC Stitch Along. We are already on the letter Q. We are making this little quail. I think he's turning out cute so far. So we're gonna continue on him today. We'll be doing the seed stitch and satin stitch today. So that's the plan. All right, let's get going. Okay, everyone, thanks again for joining me and just have to share again. This is our, uh, let me scooch TikTok over, there we go. This is our embroidery of the month for this month. It came out on, wait, was it yesterday? Is today only the, no, today's the fourth. Sheesh, so it came out, came out uh, uh, on the first. So this is what we'll be stitching uh, the third week this month. Uh, I'm excited for that one. I think it's gonna be nice and cute. But all right, let's work on the quail again. So we got pretty far. We got the whole outline done. We got basically all the back stitch done. Man, we were cruising yesterday. Uh, this is a simpler one, but um, you know, that's nice. I feel like I got a lot done. So today we're going to do the seed stitch, which is all of these little uh, little straight stitches in here. So the belly will be the orange and the wing will be white. And then we're going to actually, uh, uh, we're gonna satin stitch these two objects, like the, um, the marking under his neck and the top knot here. And we're gonna do something called a padded, uh, or it's, it's a type of padded satin stitch. And that's where you can put stitches underneath uh, to just kind of raise up the surface a little bit and then we'll stitch on that. So we're actually gonna be using the seed stitches again underneath the satin stitch. So that's I think what traditionally seed stitch is used for. I like using it just to make it look like, you know, fur and little hairs and you know, in this case, like these little feathered, feather fellers. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a lovely day. You guys, it has been so beautiful out. We have one more beautiful warm day tomorrow and then it like dropped 25 degrees or something crazy. Uh, but it's just been so fun. We had lunch outside today. Um, we have, we have bees in the ground. So we have like this ground nest of like, like a hole in the ground of, these giant, giant bumblebees. Like literally, we measured one that landed on the um, fence and it was two of like the fence squares tall, which meant it was about an inch. Like it was seriously like an inch big, like with, you know, like huge floofy butt and stuff. Um, so that's the type of bees that are in this hole. But we discovered this weekend that that hole is also the home of a chipmunk. So like there's a chipmunk and bees going in and out of this hole like constantly. And it's just, it's just fun to watch. So we were just, um, we we're eating outside and watching that today. Cute little chipmunks, but it was just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Like a perfect fall day, just still. And every once in a while, a little breeze, but it was still warm. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, Cassie says it's been cold and rainy since Friday here. Ugh. Yeah, we, we aren't gonna have rain for a while. I didn't see it anywhere in the forecast. Um, but yeah, on, on, wait, tomorrow's Wednesday. Yeah, on Thursday, you know, it's been like, like today was like 77 degrees or something. On uh, um, Thursday, I think the low is gonna be like, you know, 40 or something ridiculous. And then like a high of like 60 or something. And then later in the week, like a high of 50. We haven't had one of those in a, in a while. But I suppose, I suppose it's getting to be that time of year. The leaves have switched over like within a day. Um, like this weekend, I didn't think there was that much color shift. But yeah, now around the neighborhood, um, there's just some. Um, all the leaves are turning colors and it's just really pretty, but it's like all at once, which feels weird to me. And even our like oak tree out front, we have like this little oak tree. Um, I think it was planted like when we moved in, uh, it, like it's the city, the city's tree, it's right on the edge. 
But that one is usually the last to turn colors compared to everywhere in the in the neighborhood, but that's already turning colors too. Oh, Cassie says the height was 50 here. Yep. We're getting there um, later in the week. Ooh, Amy says I was camping in the chill. Yeah. Burr. <laughs> oh, dang. Arlene says, oh, my, we had a uh, hard frost here last night. Dang. Had trouble getting to 50 today. Wow. Where are you, where are you at? Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to get that that cool. Um, it was a little chilly last week. We did we did kind of early, but we did pick all the rest of our tomatoes and like all the green ones and stuff just to like ripen on the counter and and half of them ripened. I think the the rest um, we have a bunch of green ones yet on the counter. I think um, maybe we'll maybe we'll try and make like a relish or something out of it. I don't really know what to do with green tomatoes. But we'll make something out of it. We traffic. We will see. But yeah, one more good day. So I might, I might have to just sit outside and, and do as much as I can, much work as I can outside tomorrow because it's going to be the last one. <laughs> Sad. So I'm going to need more floss for all these little seeds. Fried green tomatoes, for sure. Yeah, I go to. I have never done fried green tomatoes. <laughs> we have not ever deep fried anything here. Arlene says in Maine. You can't go much further without leaving the country. Yep. Uh, so we are with Minnesota too, but I'm I'm not in northern Minnesota. Yep. Pretty far north. They're probably it's probably cold up there. I should check sometime. See what it is in like northern Minnesota. Different different climate up there almost. more stitches out of here but I don't think I'm gonna get them all oh my gosh we almost could get them all let's let's see if I can squeeze these somehow though I don't know how I'm gonna get down there and back up oh maybe here I'll go down I'll go this way and then come back down the other way oh my god we might not need another piece that'd be fabulous oh I wish I would have been like a little bit more mindful of like the shortest path for the rest of this Close. So, yay! It takes that red chicken. Yeah. Beat it again. All right. Last stitch. All right. Let's weave that in and run it with the back. And we will. We're done with that color. I'm gonna switch to the white, and I think I hold. I need a whole new. I need to open a whole new stain of white. So it'll be the first color that we're we're opening a new stain for. We've been just trying to go through the colors we have, but this you know seems to just stick that we want the white for the color. I think we've been kind of sticking to the uh, normal colors of these, like the the uh actual color of, of the quail. I think I think it's these colors. Yeah, so I have a white stain here. Ooh, wait, do I have Ooh, we have a tiny bit of white. Okay, so I was just prepping for the next. So we do have some white, so that's good. Ooh, and I might have some in here too. Okay, I think that's it. So we'll we'll just um here. Let me think about this because we're going to want to do the satin stitch and the satin stitch we'll probably want to do with two um two threads. That's how we've been doing satin stitch lately. So let's, let's just take all this off. It's not that much. Uh, 
trying to think of if I want to do three strands. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to get it over here. So I'm going to pull three strands out of here to do the stem stitch here. Or not the stem stitch, the um, uh, seed stitch. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, this morning, or maybe it was yesterday, Jenna and I were talking, and for the life of me, or for the life of us, because we neither of us could think of it, neither of us could remember what the running stitch was called. We're like, oh my god, the dotted line, what's the, the dotted line stitch? Like, neither of us could remember the running stitch. I don't think we had <laughs> caffeine yet, or we didn't have our uh, Jenna drinks tea, so I didn't have my coffee, and she didn't have her tea yet, but we literally could not think of the running stitch. But anyway, I almost couldn't think of the seed stitch just then. Um, but yeah, so we'll do three strands for the seed stitch. We'll do the little wing first. And then I'm going to go back to the marking here. That's where we're going to um, put a bunch of extra seed stitches to get that, like, we're going to try and do that um, added uh, satin stitch, which will just, like, make it a little rounder, a little poofy. A little something. So we'll see what Why not? Why not when we're focused on these seed stitches? Why not use it for what I think what it's really intended for in, in fancy, fancy embroidery? Oh, Sylvia says the quill. Um, Used to run in uh, uh, your backyard in California. Oh, I learned yesterday here. Um, people were saying that it's a California bird. I guess I didn't even realize that. And the state bird of, of California, is that right? Oh, it'd be so fun to see these guys run around. Oops. Stop paying attention and pull it out. So this is where I... I like accidentally got too much spooky shenanigans happened with that brown, like, um, so, oh, well, that's, um, I'm going to just try and catch some of it when I weave in the end here, but. Uh, grab more of it, hold it down, but. We get more baby photos um, every day, uh, so that's been fun. So in my head, <laughs> in my head, this baby doesn't uh, cry or, you know, do anything but look cute in photos. <laughs> uh, he just looks always like he woke up from a nap or he's just chilling, like trying to see what's around him and stuff. and. Just chill. So in my head, he's a chill, no cry baby. <laughs> I wonder if that's that's true. <laughs> so you don't know what I'm talking about. My um, my uh, sister-in-law just had baby, and uh, I'm hot for the first time. So they've been sending out. We have a a family Discord, and they've been. Laughing photos. Ooh, Sylvia says we have grouse in Alaska. It'd be fun to do like a bunch of just eight birds or like common birds for different states. Anything is good practice drawing birds. Always need more practice drawing. Trying to end up like on an edge so I can weave the end of this one. Thanks, Sylvia. Sylvia says, Congratulations, Auntie. Uh, 
All right. Last little white bit for his thing. I think he's pretty better. That's quick. Uh, the sand stitch, that's what's taking the time. But that's where we're doing all the outlines and stuff first. I feel like it's just stuff. All right, and I think I'm just going to weave in right here, right away. Back here, and I'm gonna go in and just fill the area with um, deep stitches to make that raised base for that raised satin stitch. Arlene says, oh, I'm so happy for you. You do know that <laughs> it's a perception. Absolutely. Wait till you babysit him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he cries. But I haven't seen it, so. <laughs> He's just a perfect little baby. All right. Um, so I'm just kind of thinking. So normally when I do a padded satin stitch, I mean, I haven't done it that many times. Um, but I typically kind of go every which direction, but I think in this case, I think I'm going to keep them all relatively horizontal because I'm going to be stitching these vertically. Um, so I think it makes sense to have them be horizontal because then I'm not going to like run into one kind of weird. I think they'll get covered up more by being horizontal. I don't know. That's, that's my theory. So I'm just going to just go all over this with some little stitches. I'm not going to like too much attention to where they are. Uh, the idea is just to like, we're gonna have a little bit of a lift here for our set stitches. So sometimes I've seen sometimes where where you uh, and I think we've done this once before where you actually do a back stitch as well, and then you can stitch over that as well, but. Um, I think this will give us more of like a rounded look versus a like raised rectangle look. C R O U S T. Oh, one extra letter. I was thinking grouse would be a good a good wordle word, but it's one more letter. <laughs> Uh, I missed the last couple days, but I, I did today's. Lost my thoughts there. Oh, Amy says I became an aunt when I was twelve. I'm the youngest of six. Yep, that's that's an early aunt. It's the first first kid in the in the family. It's just me and I and I have two brothers and. This is the first of the kids. I mean, this is kind of cute just as is, but we're we're gonna fill it. Let's get one more kind of top here and. I'm going to just weave in the ends, and uh, we'll start the pen stitch over the top of that. Oh, Cassie says, I was going to ask if you um, had to do the seed stitches perpendicular. I'm perpendicular to the satin stitch. I'm just making an educated guess on that right now. Um, this is a whole world, uh, for sure, like super duper fancy embroidery, like, you know, and then with like gold work and like all this other padded embroidery or padded like satin stitches and all sorts of ways and stuff. So I'm sure there's an actual rule. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a tip and rule there, but um, I'm just guessing right now. <clears throat> but it'd be, it'd be interesting to look up. I might have to do that. I think I have a book somewhere with a bunch of different padded uh, satin stitches and I might have to go find that. Oh, shoot. Ah, okay. 
Okay, found it. <laughs> Threw it a little too far. Didn't aim very well at the at the needle miner. It fell on the floor, but I did I did see where it landed. <laughs> Always freaks me out though. Okay. Uh satin stitch. So I'm gonna just um I'm gonna pull out two strands. I know there's three strands in here, so I really don't have, only have to pull out one. But by pulling out two, I can um, get them to lay next to each other a little bit better because you know it removes the twist. So that last little piece will put away. We could have done the loop method too, where we fold one big piece in half. But this is know what was left on the spool on, on the um, bobbin. So it's not not quite a fit to quite enough to fold in half. I mean we could, but it's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna weave in the end. I think like around here. Again. Fold a lot in there, but maybe it'll go a little lower. Oh, somebody says my son is the same age as my half sister. Yep, that that'd be interesting. I was just listening to someone the other day. Like, all me and my brothers are pretty close in age. Um, I'm the oldest, and then um, Jared is two years younger than me, and Justin, whose um, wife just had the baby, is six years younger than me. So we're all pretty close um, in age. Uh, but. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a totally different family dynamic, I think, if, like, you know, there was a bunch of older kids and, and younger kids, like, um, you know, if I was in college or something when the next kid is born or whatever, like, that, that'd be totally different, I would think. I think that's how... I think that's how both John's family and and uh, or John's mom's side and my mom's side was kind of like that. A bunch of older kids and a bunch of younger kids. All right, for the satin stitch, I'm always coming back to the same size. I'm having a little bit of difficulty because we wove in a bunch of... I'm, st I'm like trying to poke through <laughs> this mass of stitches that we have, but it'll get a little bit easier. And then I'm dividing the two strands. I'm putting my needle in the middle of it and I'm then just crossing over vertically to the other side. I'm trying to stay on the other um, edge of the the line. Like I'm trying to like have the line be underneath the stem. And we're just gonna do vertical stitch. <laughs> Amy says, my mom had six kids and eight and a, in an eight and a half years of pure Catholic family. Yep. 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 Catholic farm family. That's that's. Uh, they got a lot of kids. Catholic farm families. Bunch of kids on the farm. All right, so I, I you know, can't tell quite yet um, if this is getting like raised up really. I mean, I think it's going to be super subtle. I think if we did another piece that um, wasn't raised, we would be able to tell the difference because we, we did do a test on that here once. We just played around with satin stitch one day and. Um, just to see like if there's a difference and and we could we could see a little bit of that it was raised up with um with the uh, pad underneath so i'm not i didn't do what i normally do with my guidelines like i usually like to have like my vertical guidelines along the way i just kind of figured eh, this is a little short area maybe i can keep eyeballing it to be vertical and uh, not need my like guide Guidepost, but I don't know how well I'm doing. But we're gonna keep going. 
hoping that I have enough white with uh, this one strand here. Um, or this one, like, what's on my needle right now. But if not, I have that one extra bit that I can fold in half. Maybe this one. Then we'll uh, see how far we can get on, on the top knot today, too. That's funny that that's in there. Looks like I did it in a horizontal shape up there. Sometimes you can see from the side if it's a little poofier. I think it's bad. There we go. But yeah, in that book, I think it has like, you can actually, I talked about this a little yesterday, but you can like actually make like a, a pad with fabric that you actually stuff, and then that's like underneath the satin stitch, which that sounds intense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Arlene says, oh, I'm quite sure the dynamics would be different if you weren't the oldest and the only girl. <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting because, like, I had, I had um, roommates. My roommates in college were two twin sisters. And just to see how they interact with each other, I'm just like, oh, man. Yeah, it is different growing up with girls. And they had another sister, too, so and no brothers. So it just seemed like a different world. <laughs> so I don't know. I feel like I'm happy that I just had brothers for sure. There was always like an underlying competition going on. But I think, you know, I don't know. I guess I had that. We had that with my brothers too. But I don't know. I think it's different when it's all girls. And that Ah, seemed that way. I don't know. Yeah, Amy, that's what I was thinking, too. I don't think I've ever seen a quail in real life. I feel like I have an image of, you know, like, the mom with, like, a bunch of little baby ones uh, behind it, but I don't think that was, like, I think that was just, like, on TV or something. Thanks again for your uh, kit orders, everyone. Uh, all our kits have the new fabric in now too, including the embroidery of the month. So, uh, so uh, everyone who got the embroidery of the month, they went all out today, and you get to see the new fabric soon. I think uh, it's a lot easier to see the design, and it's going to be pretty and bright after it. Arlene says, I still like the ideas of the babies following. Yeah, I still kind of like that idea, too. We talked about yesterday of having, we could draw a bunch of little, like, a couple little babies. Maybe just two, because fill the space a little bit. Then we could have a couple little baby quails behind this guy. We'd have to, like, draw it on another piece of paper and see how it goes, but that would be kind of cute. I mean, you know, it's only... He's only Tuesday. So, um, I mean, pretty far along in the week, um, or on this for, for how we usually are on these, this time of the week. Although now that we're doing sand, it's just going a little slower, but, um, yeah, I still like that idea too. Just want to draw some little extra dudes. Oh, Linda says I can definitely tell it's raised. Yeah, I'm I'm getting the sense now too. Once we're getting from the middle, that that it's raised. I feel like I could could have even maybe put some more more seed stitches like in it. But like, yeah, right now I can totally tell it's a little poofy. Uh, it's nice because you know satin stitch. The whole idea with satin stitches, every stitch is like perfectly in line, right? And you can kind of see it now. Um, and by having it in line, the light hits it the same. So all those perfectly um, aligned stitches. The light hits it, so you can see like how shiny one part is, and then underneath you can see like all the shadow of it. I feel like you do get more 
shadow right away, meaning it is kind of like you can see that arc through that light and shadow. Um, so yeah, I think the I think the padding is is working. But that's what's so neat about Giant Stitch because you can get that sheen, and it and it really is just because the the light is hitting the fibers all in the same direction. Oh yeah, for sure. Arlene says, I know time is of the essence, but we've deviated a bit more before. I know we've hardly deviated at all on this. Like I've all all I've really done is well, I suppose, you know, now that we're doing the little padded satin stitch, but that's a behind the scenes subtle deviation. And then it's just like we just chose a barely lighter orange compared to the original. Um but yeah, I think it'd be fun to add little cubes. And you know, time's fine. We can if we, you know, don't get it all the way done because we added extra guys, then who cares? We'll finish it when we finish it. But I think it's a fun idea. That's what pops in my head with the quail is like the, the big one with a little itty bitty text that are like behind it that are like perfectly shrunken up versions. Like, because they have the top knot and everything too, right? The babies? I think so. I feel like, I feel like that's a picture in my head of. Like miniature rised uh, versions. Yeah. Going to do this um, railroading where I twist the thread. Jenna is doing a cross stitch and she's doing this splitting the thread thing and I, um, her cross stitch was so soft, like it just felt really nice to the touch. And she said that, like, she knows that as well. And she, she said she thought it was because she was splitting, she was doing this railroading, like splitting the thread so there's no twist in the thread at all. And I'm just like feeling it and it, it does actually feel kind of soft. So I thought that was kind of something I hadn't thought of before. Ooh, a little quail egg. Oh, that's not a bad idea either because quail eggs are so kind of interesting too. Like have a lot of texture and stuff in it. Speckles. Yeah. I think, um, let's see, today's Tuesday. I'm thinking we won't quite, like, just because that's take forever. I think um we'll probably still be working. We won't get done with, with his top knot um today. Yeah, now it now you can really tell this is raised. Like totally just from the light it is feels roundish. Um but yeah so we'll finish that on Wednesday and maybe we do the letters right away on Wednesday. Maybe we don't do those sand stitch. Maybe we do those some other way. Just because then maybe the focus will be on the sand stitch here. That, I don't know, maybe that's something. Or I don't know. A different stitch would get it done faster, which would allow us to like have a couple days to work on a little baby quail or, or quail egg. So yeah, I think maybe let's not do sand stitch for the use. That would just have a good loss of inspiration. I think I am going to need that other piece of white just for the end here. I, I don't think I'm going to make it. Well, like, yeah. I can definitely tell this is raised. This is going to be nice. So I want to do that with, with the top. But I might only do it, I think I talked about this yesterday. I might only do the. Um, uh, not the padding. The, the padding. I might only do the seed stitches like in the top part and then not here. And then maybe we can like physically see that raised area a little bit more. I think that'd be interesting to see. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to use the red. So I think I'll just have the last stitch. 
we'll do the loop method with that other class. Other class. We're back to. And we have our special again, you guys, for our for all you live watchers. Um, for twenty dollars or more from the from penguinandfish.com and I will throw in a free mystery gift. We've been going through those mystery gifts too. Jenna Jenna made a whole uh, pile more of them today. So she's been getting creative with those, and I think there's there's some good ones in there this time. <laughs> this round. Uh, all right, let's get this little. This was our last piece from there, and this is what I was gonna fold in half, and we'll do the loop. I've been trying to let the nails go for three weeks, but I have a hard time going past three weeks. This will be this will be two weeks here. And they're starting to freak me out. All right, I'm gonna just loop around some of the stitches that are already here. So I'm just gonna go under some of these stitches, and then uh, this is that fold because I folded this in half, and I'm gonna just go through that loop made by the fold. Pull it tight, and we are attached. I'm gonna continue where I left off. Actually, I think I was stopping, like going vertical, and I just tried to make it go vertical again. Next to that trying to crowd that area of this over. A couple more. Who thinks for the share, Laura? Gina, Gina says, this is looking great. I think he's coming along pretty quickly. Oh, now I feel like I'm in slow motion losing that. But we did all the back stitch first. I feel like we got a lot done. All right, I think that's that. Definitely has a raised, rounded feel, especially like right here. I feel like maybe right here I needed to put like some more padding in there, but right here for sure it feels um, raised up. That's kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna weave in this end. I'll just make a little white piece that later. And we'll get the black out again. We'll start with um, I'm gonna start with the three strands of black just to do all the padding. And actually, let's see, let's see what I got cut already. If I have like six strands on here yet, maybe I'll do six strands, but it looks like I have a um, so I just want to do like this area, but that's kind of big, so I am going to need a bunch of stitches. So I'll probably use this up, or maybe you know, the whole thing, but okay. So this is three strands. Oh, I think I have what else I've got black. I think this is probably just three. Yeah. Okay. So I'll get a new um, piece to, to do the satin stitch, and uh, we got a lot on here. I don't really have any either. Hmm. Maybe I'll weave in the end here. And I know I said I wasn't going to put any padding here, but maybe I'm just going to go up the edge, like go up or just go up the middle. So maybe I'll just do the padding anyway, just as a way to get up there. And then I'll just put a bunch of padding in. So um, I think this satin stitch, I'm going to go horizontal. So I guess more like vertical. Um, Stitches, which would make sense because I think that works pretty well here. 
going like perpendicular to what the stat would be. So I think we'll do we'll do the same thing. I think that works. Oh, Linda likes the idea of like just the top of the plume. So yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe I will just go up top here. So I I think I'm gonna have to just do that thing where I leave like leave a little area for one extra stitch. I think I'll do that. We'll we'll just we'll just I wanted to see it with just the top plume, so let's just do that. So here's my little bit that I'm gonna weave in later, and now let's just make some vertical stitches. Vertical little stitches. See if we can get that. Raised up at the back. Keep going. Okay. I'm trying. I'm gonna kind of do a lot. I think But again, yeah, I'm just gonna do a little one, just a little top stitch. Oh, hey, Kimberly! Kimberly says, "Hi, friends! Another adorable embroidery piece." I know, I like think cute. Ooh, I think I'm gonna run out of this black fast. With these two and we'll be that's good enough, I think. That's I think why I barely ever do a padded uh satin stitch. I mean you can tell, but I don't know. Is it worth all the extra work of having to like pre-fill it in? I don't know. That's a question. Well, I mean, like right here, it's pretty big horizontal stitch, but it's like those probably run out of black. Oh, and our fabric is live now too. So um, we have our our unbleached fabric, which is what our kits used to be in, um, or used to have in it. And that's what this fabric is. Uh, we have this still available um, in the 10 and a half inch squares and also by the yard. And then we have our new fabric, which is the white fabric. That's what our kits are now gonna be printed on. And we have that in the ten and a half inch squares plus yardage as well. We didn't have the yardage before, so I think that's gonna be like a nice little thing in case we want a little bit more or different sizes. We're gonna get like this whole bit as if it's like a whole over. Kind of like so. We will go right like that. All right, so I'm going to weave in the end and I'll do that little piece that's coming out. Well, this I'll, I'll definitely have to do it. Not sure if we'll finish that today. 
but we'll get a good start. Oh, Kimberly says, Alyssa, your nails still look fab. Oh, that's good. I can tell. I mean, we worked a lot in the in the yard this weekend, so I can tell that they like lit down the middle in some places, but I think you can only see when you're close up. But they, they are growing out a little bit. Um I don't like when things get like stuck on the underside of them. So I've actually put um quick dry like top coat, which I gotta buy more of, just on the top to try and like seal the bottom under underneath so like hair doesn't get stuck on it and stuff, but I don't know, like the, you know, this is, this is week two and I'm already feeling like, ugh, they're getting, getting kind of rickety. Um, and I did, um, I guess not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. And, uh, so I'm like, oh, there's still a ways to go till Sunday. And that will just be the two week mark. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I'd be cool to like, week three weeks out of these, but I don't know if I can deal with that. All right. Cute. All right, let's get a... Oh, here. So I think I'm just going to get... I'm not going to do, like, the big, long piece, and, like, I'm not going to do the loop method um, where I put it in half. I'm just going to get, like, a normal size one and pull out two strands and then just keep using... Exactly, Kimberly. Kimberly says, but at least it isn't every three days. Yes. And I'm not thinking before each life, like, oh my God, do I have to redo my nails quick? So yes, huge improvement. I am very, very pleased um, with how this is going. I mean, it definitely takes me for freaking ever to do them still. Um, but, you know, still, every two weeks without like really having to think about them at all is a massive improvement to like, and three days was, you know, real good. If I could get three days out of them, it was more like two before they just start chipping and be like very obviously chipped. And my nails don't break all the time either because they have like armor on them with, with uh, the dip nail. So like I can be doing laundry and that sort of thing and they're they're not just gonna like break, which is um what they used to do all the time. Okay, I think we'll I think I'll I guess I'll go from left to right. I think that's the whole we'll see how it goes. Ooh, I think I tied that into a weird little knot. Oh well. Um, okay. I think I'm going to start a little higher up because I don't like starting on like these weird little arcs. Um, so I'm going to start just a hair higher and I'm going to go down in that direction. And I feel like this is maybe one where I'll have to put some guide posts in. How's that? Good. Yeah. Work there down. And then when I work up, I'll have to put some guide like stay horizontal. Although it's like really hard to see anyway because it's black. Um fairly hard to see. Might have to approach it like this just to get a better basically. Yeah, 
Alright. Let's get it in the right This definitely feels Now there's no proof here as it trails off to the edge, so I think we'll have that little you know, rounded edge feel. Oh, Pat, thanks so much. Pat says, I love your needle holder. Yeah, that is a little penguin and fish logo. Little swag. Um, needle mine. All right, I'm going to jump up here, and I think I'm, I am going to add, like, horizontal lines here. Okay, I think I'm just going to add that one. Let's just, and I think I'm going to work down. Let's just work from, from here down and until we hit the, the other, other side. That's a way to do that, I suppose. Other horizontal in and work from there. And this is just easier for me to go like rotate my work vertically, I think. Yeah. You can see what I'm doing much better. Definitely have a rounded shape. It's just a little hard to tell with the black. Yeah. I mean, Curious to see like how it contrasts to like where we are not doing the padding. I think we'll probably go till this gloss is done. Oh, we might have. Started kind of crooked, so I feel like it's kind of a weird fill, and I can try and fill it with stuff that's kind of close to it. I think we've we filled that in just fine. Uh, what's left? I'm gonna just jump back up here and do just like oh, just one. I'm gonna be able to get one last straight stitch. And I think this is like after this stitch, I think I gotta go all the way across. So this is a good one to kind of get in. Yeah. All right, definitely rounded. Uh. I think from the side, you can kind of tell a little bit. I think we're getting that effect. One, two, three. Let's get. I think we'll probably end it now too, but I'm gonna get the pieces prepped so we can just get started like how how we did yesterday. That was nice. So we can start stitching right away. I think we'll probably need all of this thread yet to finish this guy. That'll work out. Oh, you're having trouble hearing? Okay, that's good to know. Um, let me know um, the rest of you. Uh, not not so much TikTok here, but um, on uh, Facebook and YouTube, let me know how the sound is, because we're trying a new way of doing sound, so I can definitely turn it up if this is too low. 
Let me just do that a hair now and we can see how it goes. All right, I, I turned it up just like the teeniest hair, so I don't I don't know if this is any better. Okay. Let's do let's just get it all prepped. That's right. I'm like, what are, what are we doing? I'm just getting it prepped. Oh, a little broken at times. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we'll work work on that. I have it set so if it's too loud, it it tunes down a little bit, so hmm. I might have to work on that a little bit. Olin says here just fine and Amy says sounds fine. Okay. Good, good. All right, so I'm gonna just come up right here. And this will be the starting point for tomorrow, I think. And tomorrow we're gonna cut all the way across um the whole edge here. So we'll go from there to the top and then um and then a little bit more down. Oh, there's a reverberation, but it could be my ears. Here, let me let me check so for a sec quick. Hold on. Okay, I don't have that um in my ears, because sometimes if I don't have it pushed in all the way, I can get that kind of mechanically reverberation sound. Sound is much better for me now. Oh, I thought it was my audio. Oh, okay, good. Um, like it sounds better now than it did like three minutes ago. Okay, but it fades a little bit yet. Oh, kept missing some of your words. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I think I might have to put my like popping bit down a little bit, maybe. Cause like if I get too loud, <laughs> if I get too loud, I won't. I won't do it now. But it auto. Um, makes it go a little quieter, so it's not like popping in your guys' ears super loud. So maybe I have to just reduce it a little bit. Oh, Kimberly says yes, it's better. Okay, so I, t I did turn it up a, a hair. So um, okay, so I'll keep it. I'll keep it here for now, and I'll maybe turn down that like popping loudness thing, so it's not as sensitive. Okay, good. Sorry, you guys. I know we're just uh, this week. I'm kind of testing a new sound thing for the first time. Oh, I'm a little garbled. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll have to listen. Listen back a little bit. Okay, but thanks. Thanks for your feedback, guys. I'll definitely um take a look at it more. Cool, cool. All right, and I think we'll call it a night with this. Oh, Ramon, uh, Ramona, I am here every weeknight at eight thirty p.m. Central Time. So I will be here uh, tomorrow, rest of the week. Uh, this particular project, the the letter Q, we are working through the whole alphabet here. So. Uh, and in order. So we're we're on the queue right now. Um, we'll be working on that this week. And then next week, we are going to do the R. So R is our little raccoon. And uh, then after that, uh, so we only work on the ABC quilt project the first full week and the second full week of the month. And uh, um, then the third week, we'll be working on our granny square. This is our new embroidery of the of the month here. And uh, yeah, then it's a free week, uh, the last week of the month. And I think I might work on my granny square quilt, like actually put a quilt label on there. And we'll actually get it done. So I think that'll be nice. Oh, when I turn it all the way, it is too loud. When I turn it down, I can't hear. Okay, I am going to definitely look into this a little bit more. We're trying to tweak this so it's a hair better. Um, I'm hoping I'm not as like brassy sounding as what it was like a couple weeks ago. Um, we'll see. Kept missing some of your words. Okay, I will I will definitely dig in a little bit more. Um, I think I, I think I know some things based on your guys' comments, I think I know like two different things I can try. Um, and we'll see see if that works better tomorrow. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right. Oh, Ram Ramona says my daughter is trying to learn. Oh, all our stuff is beginner and I'm here every day. Uh, so if you have any questions or you're having uh, trouble with anything, uh, for sure, just ask. We can totally do a demo or go through something for sure. Love doing that here. All right, everyone, I think we'll end it there tonight. Here's our progress for today. But yeah, so I'm here for about an hour too. So 8.30 to 9.30 Central Time. And uh, yeah, Monday through Friday.
every once in a while with a Saturday, but we haven't done that for a little while. I'll have to do that again. Oh, yesterday's sound was super choppy. Oh, man. Okay, Gina, I am definitely going to work on this more. Um, I think it sounds better, but yeah, there's some technical things that I'm working through yet. So, all right. Awesome. Thanks for your feedback, guys, for sure. All right. I will see y'all tomorrow. Have a lovely, lovely evening. Good night.